On behalf of Brett and Debbie, it's my pleasure to welcome everyone here today to be part of this special occasion. So you can all take a deep breath, relax now, because we made it to this point, right? So, and no doubt this is going to be a day that you're going to both remember and one that you're going to cherish forever. Because it's a special occasion when two people become one as a family. But not only is it a special arrangement, it's also a sacred arrangement. Now, what do we mean when we say that marriage is a sacred arrangement? Well, it means that marriage is an arrangement that was instituted by our Creator, Jehovah God. In fact, this was explained for us in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. And notice what Jehovah, what He noticed about Adam in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. It says, Then Jehovah God said, It is not good for the man to continue to be alone. I'm going to make a helper for him as a compliment of him. So obviously Jehovah noticed something that Adam was by himself, right? That he needed a mate. And obviously Jehovah is the one that instituted the sacred arrangement. And how he did it is kind of in a poetic way and it's outlined for us in verses 21 through 24. He goes, so Jehovah God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took over or took one of his ribs and then closed it up the flesh over it. And Jehovah God built the rib that he had taken from the man into a woman, and he brought her to the man. Then the man said, This is at last bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one will be called woman, because from man she was taken. That is why a man will leave his father and his mother, and he will stick to his wife, and they will become one flesh. So Jehovah God himself brought the first couple together. I know that when Jehovah instituted the marriage arrangement, he knew that there would be days like today, right? where ones would uh, engage in marriage in that regard. So since Jehovah is the creator of this sacred arrangement, and he knows what we need to live happy lives, then we do well to follow the guidelines that he has outlined for couples today. To truly be successful and have a happy marriage. And of course, having Jehovah in your marriage is brought up for us in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12, about why it's so important to have Jehovah in your marriage. No doubt, remember, it talks about a threefold cord cannot quickly be torn in two. And we know what that threefold cord or who that is, right? That's Jehovah God. So having Jehovah in your marriage is what's going to make your marriage strong. In fact, we can trust his advice because he knows our phys physical and emotional makeup better than any human ever could because Jehovah created each and every one of us, right? So he knows what our needs are. So what does it mean to have Jehovah in your marriage? It means that you both have to put Jehovah first in your marriage. That's how it was designed, and that's what it takes to have a truly happy and lasting marriage. Fortunately, Jehovah has provided us with an instruction manual, you might say, for the marriage arrangement. That will help you in this regard, and that, of course, we know is His Word, the Bible, isn't it? So studying the Bible, praying together, and worshiping together will draw you closer to each other. Since it's so important to have Jehovah, in your marriage, especially in the time period we're living in, the last days of this old system, 
then it's important for us to consider what each mate's role is in this sacred arrangement. So first of all, we'll outline for the husband. So for Brett, for you to put Jehovah first in your marriage means that you will do the best to follow the outline or counsel found in God's word for Christian husbands. So let's just take a moment and look at the counsel for Christian husbands outlined in Ephesians chapter five, beginning with verse 25. Simply he says, husbands continue loving your wives just as the Christ also loved the congregation and gave himself up for it. And if you look at verses 28 and 29 also, it says in the same way husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. A man who loves his wife loves himself. For no man ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cherishes it, just as the Christ does the congregation. So according to these verses, a Christian husband, right, you're to love and to cherish your wife, just as Jesus loved and cherished the congregation. I know that sounds easy enough to do, right? But really, as a head of your household, it means you'll need to make sound Bible-based judgments, and that you'll need to provide materially, emotionally and spiritually for Debbie. First, taking lead spiritually and worship is one of the things that something that many people in the world don't think about yet, but yet it's vital in balancing a Christian family life. Now, a lot of times out of those three things, providing materially is probably the easiest because when it comes to providing emotionally and spiritually, it's going to take a little more effort and a little more thought on your part. It means that you'll need to keep the lines of communication open between the both of you. It means you'll not only have to tell Debbie your feelings in a kind way, but you'll have to listen as well to her feelings. So a good husband knows his wife's emotional needs and is sensitive to those needs. In fact, in time, you'll probably be able to tell just by the way Debbie looks at you, whether you're in trouble or not. <laughs> maybe you've already figured that out. Yeah. But maybe in time, you'll know. Of course, the most important thing for you is to provide spiritually for your household. No doubt one of the first things you'll want to discuss together and maybe you already have is when you're going to have your family worship evening. Be sure and make it a part of your weekly schedule and stick with it. Certainly Jehovah will bless your efforts if you do. And don't forget you have the example of Jesus Christ and how he treated the congregation. Jesus was loving to the congregation and even with his disciples. Um, a lot of times they may have frustrated him, but yet he didn't get angry with them. He took into consideration their weaknesses and in fact in time Jesus was willing to give his life for his disciples for the congregation or we could say his bride right so there's a lot of responsibilities that come with being a good husband one that has the respect of his wife but we know with the help of Jehovah and following the instructions outlined in his word that just you can be successful in that regard and probably this is one of the times where you might say it'd be okay to read the instructions if necessary in that regard. But now for Debbie. Did I tell you you look really lovely today? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> for you to put Jehovah first in your marriage means that you'll do your best to follow the counsel outlined for Christian wives. So let's look back at Ephesians. This time the fifth chapter and let's look at verses 22 and 24. Verse 22 said, let wives be in subjection to their husbands as to the Lord. And in verse 24, and in fact, as the congregation is in subjection to the Christ, wives should also be to their husbands in everything. So Debbie, according to these verses, by your support of the headship arrangement, you can do much to promote the material success and happiness of your marriage. One of the best ways to show Brett your love for him is by working together and cooperating with him in the decisions that he will make. Especially if there comes a time when you might not completely agree with one of the decisions, or the way he handles the matter, it's going to call for love and patience on your part. And of course, you may not know this, and I hate to be the one to tell you this, but Brett may not be perfect. <laughs> so with many, as many Christian wives have to do today, many wives are patient and loving with their husbands. You know, Proverbs speaks of a Christian wife as a helper to her husband. In fact, it says that her value is far more than that of quarrels. Isn't that nice, the way Jehovah views Christian wives? So clearly the Bible shows that a wife's role in the marriage arrangement is an honorable one and a dignified one. In fact, you remember the first scripture that we read in a, or Genesis chapter 2, verse 18? It said you're to be viewed as a compliment to your husband. So isn't that a nice thought as well? So just as Brett has responsibilities in the marriage outlined for him, 
in the instruction manual, you might say you as well have responsibilities that can help to make things run smoothly. In fact, a Christian wife's attitude and demeanor is important to the family arrangement. So there are also some principles that both of you would want to do well to keep in mind in the marriage arrangement. Colossians chapter 3 verse 14 tells us to clothe ourselves with love for it is a perfect bond of union. So just as clothing protects the body, our love can safeguard the marriage arrangement. Thus it's important that both mates clothe themselves with this quality of love. This means that you both have to look for ways to show love to each other and look for ways to be open and communicate. You know, our family happiness book says if love is the heart of a happy family life, then communication could be called its lifeblood. So what can help you to keep the lines of communication open? Well, one way is to follow the admonition at Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 26. In fact, this was one of my grandfather's favorite scriptures that he would put, uh, have my grandmother write on a lot of the marriage cards and wedding cards. Who knows, maybe it was yours too. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 26, the last latter half says, Do not let the sun set while you are still angry. So isn't that a nice thought? Never to go to bed angry. So certainly that's uh, helpful to keep in mind. So no doubt it's probably obvious to you now that this instruction manual and the counsel found in it is the key to your happiness now and in the lasting future. So this instruction manual is yours. It already has your wedding date on it, your names. So use it and if a problem ever comes up, read it and apply it. And most important, let it help you both draw closer to your God Jehovah and let it help you to love and cherish each other forever. So now we get to the fun part. <laughs> the wedding vows. Ready for that part? Okay, so first is a question I ask you, Brett. It says, Do you, Brett Hurley, in the presence of Jehovah God and these witnesses, take Debbie Knoll to be your wedded wife, to love and to cherish in accordance with the divine law as outlined in the Holy Scriptures for Christian husbands for as long as you both may live? I do. Debbie, I have a question for you as well. It's a similar one. It says, Do you, Debbie Knoll, in the presence of Jehovah God and these witnesses, take Brett Hurley to be your wedded husband, to love and to cherish and deeply respect in accordance with the divine law as outlined in the Holy Scriptures for Christian wives for as long as you both may live? I do. Good. That was the correct answer. I'm like, yeah, both of you. So you do too. Now I'll ask you to uh, repeat after me, Brett. So I, Brett Hurley. I, Brett Hurley. Take you, Debbie Knoll. Take you, Debbie Knoll. To be my wedded wife. To be my wedded wife. To love and to cherish in accordance with the divine law. To love and cherish according, in accordance with the divine law. As set forth in the Holy Scriptures for as, Christian husbands. As set forth in the Holy Scriptures for Christian husbands. For as long as we both shall live together on earth. For as long as we both shall live together on earth. According to God's marital arrangement. According to God's marital arrangement. Good job. Now Debbie, I'd ask you to repeat after me. Don't look at me looking at Hi, Debbie Noel. <laughs> Hi, Debbie Noel. Take you, Brett Hurley. Take you, Brett Hurley. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To love and to cherish and deeply respect. To love and to cherish and deeply respect. In accordance with the divine law. In accordance with the divine law. As set forth in the Holy Scriptures for Christian wives. As set forth in the Holy Scriptures for Christian wives. For as long as we both shall live together on earth. For as long as we both shall live together on earth. According to God's marital arrangement. According to God's marital arrangement. Okay, nice, thank you. Now if there's rings to be exchanged, we we'll do that at this time. In the right hand.
Okay, thank you. So for as much as Brett and Debbie have covenanted before Jehovah God and these witnesses to accept each other in wedlock, I, as an ordained minister, and by the authority conferred upon me by the Holy Scriptures in the state of Florida, pronounce that they are husband and wife together. What God has yoked together, let no man put apart. Now be appropriate if we offer the prayer blessing. Show our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, once again we bow our heads before you and express our love to you as our Creator, thanking you for this day of life and the, the privilege we have of being a part of this um, arrangement. It's, we know it makes you happy when um, husbands and wives join each other together and that they, especially those that uh, look forward to living in your beautiful paradise together. And so we ask now that your blessing to be upon uh, Brett and be upon Debbie and help them to continue to grow together and to grow spiritually and be able to uh, continue to have a, a fulfillment in your purpose here upon this earth. So we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for uh, the many things you provide for us, the necessities of life each and every day. And as our creator, we love you and respect uh, your decisions and uh, pray for your blessing to be upon everything we do. So we leave the rest of this day in your care and always ask forgiveness for our sins. And we do this through the merits of your Son and our reigning King, Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, it's my happy pleasure to introduce to this marriage gathering, brother and sister, Brett Hurley. <laughs> now you may kiss the bride. Yeah. <laughs> now can we eat? Yeah. <laughs> now let's eat. Let's eat. Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah. Remind me sooner. Congratulations. You almost kept it together. She cries too much. <laughs> I say the same to you, sweetie. Into the family. You've been in the family for a long time. I didn't even have to be on the outside of the picture. <laughs> How's that for sneaky? <laughs> Sweaty. I'm looking at some deodorant. I have a makeup mustache. I could have gotten a look on your face that I'm comfortable with. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh. Try to keep it together for a few more hours, okay? <laughs> I told him, I said, remember the mic's still on. <laughs> I hope I didn't hurt you. Congratulations, sweetie. Hey, buddy. <laughs> oh, oh, is this the receiving line? Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Receiving line for 10 people? Have they called her? Hey, why was I last? We gotta go, go up there. Maybe Jane. Are they ready? Sweetie. I told Dad I know. <laughs> you already jumped a spot. Look at you. Congratulations, buddy. Okay. Here's next. <laughs> There's only a few remaining. Congratulations, Amy. A little short version. Is that good enough for you? Close enough. Who's <laughs> next? Thank you, John. Thank you so much. You did awesome. You didn't trip? No. I think we're going to come back full. Yeah. 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 Ye
mask, right? You know what? Let's just do it right here. Wait, wait, wait. Other than the tie, I was here last week, but they, they can only come about a week every six months. Sunglasses are Brits. Let me see you. Okay. okay. Shades. Uh, John's. John's? Oh, I need that. <laughs> sure. Going to you ready to eat? Well, mm, um, now that I think about it, it doesn't sound like a bad idea. No, uh, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> ready to eat, Ronnie? Hey, how about it? All right. You made your call. Yeah. I'll give you a hug, Uncle Ronnie. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Okay, glad to be here. Either way, it don't matter. Well, I wondered if we walk through there, if it'd be easier for you. Oh, I don't. I don't yeah. know, we've already got sand in the shoes. Well, <laughs> I do. I didn't even know where my shoes are. Uh, <laughs> I, I them off on somebody, I'm sorry. Uh, They're right here. Come on, Dad, we'll start.